Assignment Earth started life as a pilot for what Gene Roddenberry hoped would be a spin-off science fiction series. With rumors of cancellation flying around through most of the second season, this was Gene's chance to keep a series going and keep himself employed. He spent a lot of time rewriting Art Wallace's script, and according to producer Bob Justman, insisted on being involved in every aspect of the production, from the sets and props to the special effects and even the casting of the cat, Roddenberry got involved. You can check it out in Assignment Earth. You're asking me to remember something that was in another lifetime. Assignment Earth was, was the cat. And, and they didn't want to use a real cat's voice because there was such a range of emotions that this cat went through. It was almost human. Now, are you jealous, Isaac? It's most unbecoming. So that's why they picked a human being to do her. And uh, that was lots of fun. Would you mind telling me who that is? That, Miss Lincoln, is simply my cat. Your cat? And then I also did the computer in that, I think. The woman who is the, compu uh, the computer voice. Incomplete, but sufficient. To be hired to play an animal was the most exciting thing of all. Oh, thank you, Isis. I'll be right in. Well, I don't think I've ever... Oh, I just did um, an elephant, a uh, matriarch of a herd for a, a documentary. I know that ever since I was a child, I've loved science fiction. I mean, I used to write science fiction when I was a kid. Um, it, it is the last frontier, except for the brain, the kind of brain research we're doing now. But at, at that time in the 60s, it seemed to be the last great exploration was space. And there was something very romantic and adventurous about that. Terry Garr, who plays Roberta Lincoln, is well known to television and movie audiences through her roles in The Sonny and Cher Show, Young Frankenstein, Close Encounters, Tootsie, and After Hours. But we had her first. This show uh, talked to people uh, through the characters. We reached out to the audience through those three major uh, actors, uh, DeForest Kelly and Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner, and through the stories we were trying to tell, which are universal kinds of stories. Uh, they're stories that speak to the heart. They talk about love. They talk about friendship. They talk about loyalty. They talk about uh, patriotism, uh, exploration, curiosity, reaching out. And I think all those things still touch people, even when you look at a 30-year-old show. Shut up. The Cape Kennedy footage in Assignment Earth wasn't shot by Star Trek's crew who hadn't been within 3,000 miles of Florida. There are some wonderful post-production tricks, including the ingenious marriage of actual rocket footage with soundstage sets. Robert Lansing was seen climbing on a studio-built gantry crane, but the visuals of Cape Kennedy in the background were supplied by NASA. Uh, by the way, Assignment Earth never was picked up by the network as a series, but we got to see it as an episode of Star Trek. The spin-off has been a staple of the television industry since it began in the early 50s. Love American Style gave birth to Happy Days, which in turn spun off both Laverne and Shirley and Mork and Mindy. All in the family spawned Maude, the Jeffersons, and Good Times. Star Trek has had successful spin-offs in the animated series, Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. But before all of them, Star Trek tried one spin-off that never well, spun off. The last episode of Star Trek's second season was intended to become a brand new series, a blend of science fiction with The Man from Uncle and a little bit of James Bond thrown in for good measure. It was called Assignment Earth. 
It was intended that this new series would focus on the adventures of the mysterious Gary Seven and his human secretary, Roberta Lincoln. Robert Lansing was cast in the role of Gary Seven, and in her first major acting role, the part of Roberta Lincoln was played by a very young Terry Garr. Terry would later go on to stardom in such films as Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Mr. Mom, and Tootsie. Even though Kirk and Spock hint at the many adventures that lie in store for Gary Seven and Roberta Lincoln, we never got to see any of them. The spin-off never happened, and Star Trek's second season ended on a disappointing note. With ratings faltering, NBC announced the cancellation of the series. A letter-writing campaign organized by fans and science fiction writers convinced the network to renew the series for a third season. Unfortunately, they put us in the unenviable 10 p.m. Friday night time slot and slashed our production budget. Within a year, it would prove to be the death knell for the original series. Before that would happen, Star Trek's third season would produce a few of the best and some of the worst episodes of the entire series. But that's a story for later.